Hello and welcome to Palmer X. Hi, I'm Pharmacist Amr and today we'll be discussing hyperemesis gravidarum. So what is hyperemesis gravidarum? Say it as fast as you can, three times. Hyperemesis gravidarum, hyperemesis gravidarum, hyperemesis gravidarum. See, let me tell you, practice, because the other night I was the tongue twisting champ at the party. Let me tell you, hyperemesis gravidarum was a killer. But it's in the news. And um, celebs such as Kate Middleton, Kim Kardashian, and Amber Rose have all shared their symptoms of having hyperemesis gravidarum. So what do these three women have in common? Well, I know. I know what you're thinking. Yes, they all three were pregnant at the time. I knew that was easy. Okay, so all three of them were pregnant. And here in my hands, I have the actual quotations from Amber Rose in her uh, Instagram account. Okay, who is Amber Rose, right? Come on guys, guys, you really don't know who Amber Rose is? But I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who don't know who Amber Rose is. I mean, for goodness sake, um, she was a model. She was an exotic dancer. So, unless you saw her dancing, which I never saw her dancing. She has been in rap videos. Um, she was in a rap video with Kanye West and they hooked up. Then she was in a rap video with Wiz Khalifa and they had a baby. Do you see a pattern here? Amber Rose and rappers? Okay, maybe, I don't know. I don't know that many rap videos, but apparently she does. So here I have in her uh, Instagram quotations of her experiences and see if you could pick out the symptoms that uh, she was feeling. Amber Rose. I said I was going to document this pregnancy a little bit more than I did with Sebastian. Sebastian's her son. With Sebastian, I had hyperemesis. And I have again with this baby. She's currently pregnant. For people that don't know what it is, it's extreme nausea vomiting and dehydration you see that i'm really really tired i can eat a little bit more now because i'm in my second trimester but not much i pretty much sleep all day and i try to be cute and get my hair done and i just slept in and it was all messed up okay that part is not the symptoms i'm trying to clue in this is a medical show a pharmacy show all babies are a blessing so she went on and she tends to ramble a little bit, but we here at Palmer Arx get right to the important medical parts. It's really, really hard being pregnant. I'm not gonna lie. To all the women out there who just pop out babies like it's nothing, God bless you guys. Oh my God, it's a lot. I wanna be out, I wanna be cute. Okay, that is not medical, but it's building. I want to show off my belly. I can't get off this couch. Sounds like, sounds like me. I'm tired and I wanna barf all day. That's the key, did you get it? I wanna barf all day. It's not just fun, but it's totally, totally worth it. And that's Amber Rose. So now we've gone over the fluff and now we're gonna go in the next segment over the meat and potatoes and that's why you're here. So stay tuned. <music> What is hyperemesis gravidarum? The easiest answer is it's severe morning sickness. I mean, it's really severe. It's not just vomiting in the morning and feeling nauseous in the morning. I mean, this is it could last throughout the day where you're nauseous all day or even vomiting all day, every day. So, like Amber was saying in her video that she feels like she wants to barf all day, but that's what Amber was saying. But it's, it's that severe. That's 50 to 90% of all pregnancies uh, will experience nausea and vomiting. But it's just that unlucky 1% that get hyperemesis gravidarum. And this could begin like in about two weeks to sometimes gradually to two to four months. And this can last throughout the whole entire pregnancy, all the way to birth and a week after. 
Now the guidelines are saying that if this goes on after the birth in one week, in the year in week two, that you should check with your doctor to see if there could be another cause and to rule out hyperemesis gravidarum. So if you've had a birth and you experienced this one time, like Amber was saying in her video with Sebastian, she felt the same symptoms, nauseous and vomiting. So if you've experienced this at least one time with a child, it pretty much stays with you. So it goes on. It, you're, you, it's with you. So you will have this with each and every child you have birth with. So what are the other signs? Uh, we've already covered nausea and vomiting. Check your urine it, it, to see if it's dark or discolored. It, you might even see blood. Or you may not even urinate in 24 hours. So that's something to look at. Weight loss of 5% is common. That's the number that seems to be coming up in all the research. But you could obviously lose more. Um, stomach pain is another symptom. And of course, if you're vomiting, yes, you're going to have cramping and stomach pain. Um, deep drops in blood pressure. Now, this is very important because, that, you know, you're, you're, of course, when you find those deep drops in blood pressure, that will make you faint and fatigued. I mean, you'll feel lightheaded, and this kind of goes along with the loss of electrolytes that you're experiencing when you're vomiting a lot. You're, expand, you're expelling a lot of your electrolytes, and so this will make you more faint, cramping. Many of the people who go through this say they're really fatigued, and they just feel really, really exhausted. You're laying around in bed and things like that. So, now, here we are. So, what are the treatments? We have first treatments, we have non-medical, because you wanna start out with non-medical first, and then, of course, you go to medical stuff. So let's take a look at the non-medical treatments. Um, small, frequent meals, because big meals won't make you vomit, nauseous, so small, frequent little meals and people have described women have described um, that there's like they feel like an acid buildup happens if they don't eat frequent meals so that's another thing get those frequent meals in uh, small snacks like crackers um, I've seen a girl tell me about uh, toast has worked for her um, just pieces you know, it seems like, you know, there's no desire to eat, but you have to eat because you're going to vomit. Really popular recommendation is a high protein, low fat diet. This could be with yogurt and berries, things like that. Drink plenty of fluids. Plenty of water is good, but clear um, liquids um, like ginger ale and lemonade seem to do really well. And there's a hint about the ginger ale. Avoid the triggers. So what triggers it? You see an onion, you just want to vomit. Yeah, don't look at onions. If you see your husband and you want to vomit, well, okay, just don't, just avoid him. Okay, that was a joke, people, let's calm down. Ginger is a spice. Um, that seems to be the spice of to choice. So ginger ale, ginger, you see the combination here. Um, also um, massages, anything to relieve pressure, that seems to work. Um, now, we go to, let's take a look at the medical treatments. So since we are a medical channel, we should talk about medical treatments, right? Okay, now we're here on the medical treatments. And what I want to take you through is, it's kind of like, I'm going to take you through the ladder of medical treatments. Like there's a progression in how this goes. Now, you begin on step one of the ladder and you'll climb up to the top. And that's the ladder. But prescribers can uh, prescribe multiple layers. So they can prescribe one, two, or three of these products at a time. They can jump to another product. So... This is all liberal for your physician, but this is generally how it works. Okay, number one, you start out with vitamin B6. It's a 
typical vitamin. You can find it at any um, over-the-counter, over-the-counter means um, available without prescription at a pharmacy, okay? So vitamin B6. Number two, they graduate, step two would be uh, an antihistamine like bonine is, um, you, you see this for, for travel sickness, of course, like doxylamine unison. Remember that one, doxylamine unison, because there is a combination we're gonna be talking about that provides this and that. So a doctor commonly prescribes both, so B6 with that. So that could be how you start out with. And all the other things, drinking ginger, ale, and um, you know massages. All right, if these aren't working, they could even add this other drug called metoclopramide. These are, these are drugs in a class that are designed to help you stop not vomiting, but that's one of the things they will prescribe. Now, from what I've been reading and seeing, um, some people have been vomiting on this too. The next one is Odin Citron. Now, this is really good for helping people with nausea. It's used a lot with chemo patients. However, the FDA has released findings that uh, there are risks with potential birth defects like uh, cleft lip and uh, congenital heart defects in child, uh, your infant. So definitely, if it's that bad, take a, let your doctor know about the risks. And so um, if you want to take that decision, um, that, that's very important to take for you to have this information because the birth defects, you know, it's, you have a 130% chance more of getting a, a birth defect than a, the typical person. So you have to weigh that in. The next one is an antacid type of thing. So you might be experiencing uh, problems with um, like uh, acid reflux is a good example. And so, um, yes, you're vomiting, it's burning, you, that, that acid's going through your, you know, esophagus and stuff. So you're gonna probably experience some of that. So omeprazole has been one of the things people are prescribing. Omeprazole is over the counter, again, available without prescription, that's what that means. So that's also available to you. Now, as you're going up the ladder, we're now to the point where you might need an injectable steroid or might be needed to be hospitalized and put on some kind of IV. Like an IV methylprednisolone is a common thing that they'll prescribe. And uh, what the whole IV thing is really what the goal is, is because your stomach is just rejecting everything, you're vomiting, you're nauseous. So let's, the, the theory is bypass the stomach, let's go with IV, the IV fluids goes through you and, and you get your feeding. So that is an option. However, this is a pharmacy channel and we are here to give you information. So there are two FDA approved drugs. Now, I must do a precursor to this. These two FDA approved drugs are approved only for morning sickness. So technically, do they help with hyperemesis um, gravidarum? Well, we are not allowed to say that. However, there are many, many reports of women doing this. So who have had success with hyperemesis gravidarum. So while, while you're going along the ladder, you could go with step one, step two, and this could be this could be right there in step one and step two. Now, the two drugs I'm gonna mention is, the first one is diclegis, diclegis, diclegis. And the next one is bongesta. So, diclegis, what is, what the heck is it? Right, diclegis is basically doxylamine, which is that unisom, combined with pyridoxine, which is B6, 10 milligrams of each. So it's a 10 milligram, 10 milligram. Um, now the secret to this is basically you're, you can do, do your own diclegis by getting unisom 
and uh, vitamin B6 together. But some people have been experiencing, I guess I've heard of people saying the taste, um, they feel nauseous, and again, anything that triggers nauseous, you're vomiting, or the smell, I don't know what. Also, because you're taking Unisom, Unisom is a sleep aid. You're very, you're, you're zombie-like. I mean, you're, you're tired and groggy. This one, Dicled, just goes past that. It goes past your stomach a little bit and goes again. It's a delayed release, so it delays its release into your body. It is the two drugs. However, it takes about five to seven hours to work. Um, the dosing is two tablets at bedtime. So this seems to be doing very well from what I've seen uh, from people who've been taking it. So definitely if you have morning sickness and none of these other stuff works and you don't wanna go on IV, um, this is something to consider. Um, your doctor might even recommend it. Um, so you take this two tablets at bedtime and if it's not under control, you're still feeling the same, you can bump it up to the max daily dose is four tablets a day, but you don't take all four at once it's broken down throughout the day. So you would start with one tablet in the morning, one tablet at noon, and then two tablets at bedtime. Um, now, what is the cost of this? It's expensive. A bottle of 60, I did some searches around. I, I mean, there's, there was a Walmart that's charging $442 a month for a bottle of 60, which would be the standard two times two tablets at bedtime now I did, did research for you there is a coupon for this because see a lot of people don't know this and then they get disgruntled and depressed you can go to the website at dicledges.com and get a coupon from the manufacturer for a $40 coupon now how this works is it it says your copay will be $40 However, your insurance has to pay the rest. So what we, the pharmacy will have to do is a thing called a prior authorization. What they'll have to do is see if your insurance will allow this. Now, again, some insurances we don't know, but let's say your insurance allows the, the option of uh, prior authorization. They cover a certain amount and then your coupon will cover a certain amount and your copay will be $40, okay? Now, the next drug is Bongesta. Bongesta is made of the same ingredients as Dicledges. So it's doxylamine, your Unisom. This time it's 20 milligrams and pyridoxine B6 at 20 milligrams. Now this is uh, another um, in, um, extended release, which means it, it, it releases, um, it's a slow release kind of drug. It just doesn't dissolve right away. Okay, with this one, you take without food. Again, all these are these two drugs are without food because, you know, your stomach is sensitive. You take one at bedtime. And then if that is not under control, you can take a second one in in the one in the morning and one at night. So take one tablet in the morning and one tablet at night for a maximum of two tablets for one day. The max dosing is two tablets. Now this one seems to be, this works just as good. I mean, people are, this one people would go to if the diclegis wasn't working as well. Or sometimes a doctor might think this might be a better option because again, it's one tablet versus two tablets at bedtime. And um, if worst case scenario, it's two a day. So the retail on this one is about $665 for 60 tablets, a one month supply. But if you go to their website, Bongesta, they do offer a coupon, $0, but certain criteria must be adhered to. So you can work with that in the pharmacist. Maybe you'll have to get one month free, the next month, something. But they do, at least you can see if you like it. The, okay, these two drugs that we're featuring on this channel, Hyperemesis Gravidara, there are contraindications. And so there is a list of contraindications. I, I don't promote these contraindications because there's so many on almost anything. And so um, 
me being a pharmacist, I see people like, what are the contraindications? And then I go through it and then they're like, oh my God, I have this, I have that. And it's, it's not saying that everyone gets it. I mean, I'm talking about side effects, sorry. So, so what are the side effects or the contraindications? Let's take a look. Now there's a list of, of contraindications and a list of uh, side effects that would, there are a lot, but that doesn't mean that this drug has all those things. The, these things, they have to mention it because legally they have to mention every single thing. If one person one in a million said um, they experienced some sort of interaction, uh, they have to note it down. Okay, so here are the basic ones, the most, okay, so if you're allergic to any kind of antihistamine because this drug has an antihistamine, the Unisom. So if you're allergic to Unisom or any of those, Benadryl, uh, Claritin, um, uh, Zyrtec, all those, Allegra, well, this may not be for you. Also contraindicated are monoamine oxidase inhibitors. So what do I mean by that? That is a mouthful. Well, these are a group of antidepressants. Um, actually, I don't know anyone who takes this. I really haven't seen it in years. I'm shocked that people are even just prescribing it because there's so many uh, drug interactions. But in, if you're taking Marplan, Nardil, Emsema, and Parnate, you cannot take this drug. Now, if you're breastfeeding, it does, these two drugs pass through the breast milk, so you have to make all other alternatives. Um, if you have glaucoma, you need to be aware, you're just contraindicated, because again, there's the, the antihistamine thing. Um, also, peptic ulcers, a stenosis peptic ulcer is a particular one that they mention to be, to watch out for. Drowsiness, well, this does cause less drowsiness than Unison, okay? But there is, because it is an antihistamine, it does cause drowsiness. So they don't recommend driving or, you know, anything, operating heavy machinery, anything like that. Um, another thing, if you are being drug tested at work or something like that, this could trigger a false positive test for let's say they're testing for um, methadone or an opiate like Oxycontin. I know opiates, what are opiates? Oxycontin, morphine, um, PCP. This will trigger a false positive and hey, you're not on those things. You are taking care of your pregnancy. Okay, so this is pretty much it uh, for hyperemesis gravidarum. I hope you found this informative and at least somewhat entertaining because you know, I, medical channels can be very boring at times. So if you like the channel, please put a like. If you subscribe, I'm trying to get more stuff out there. I'm just a one man show at this moment. <laughs> um, I do in, invite some interviews too, so that helps. And um, okay, and thank you for watching. And I hope to see you on our next video. Stay healthy.